This is a quick review of Mendel's laws. A gene can exist in multiple forms called alleles. Mendel's first law states that the two alleles of a gene segregate into gametes, that is, they separate and partition into each sperm and each egg. For example, this F1 hybrid plant carries two alleles of a gene that specifies plant height, big T and little t. With respect of the T gene, this individual can make two types of gametes, big T and little t. Therefore, it is called heterozygous. Plants are capable of self-fertilizing, a process called selfing. When that happens, eggs that are either big T or little t are fertilized by sperms that are also either big T or little t. This process can be visualized by drawing a 2x2 two two square whose compartments are filled with the appropriate gametic genotypes. The Punnett square represents all possible outcomes. In the F2 generation, we see three different genotypes, big T, big T, little t, big t, and little t, little t, to which correspond two phenotypes tall and short. The ratio is therefore 1 to 2 to 1 for genotypes and 3 to 1 for phenotypes. You can see that the big T is dominant and the little t is recessive. To review Mendel's second law, consider two pure breeding lines of plants, one tall and red and the other short and pink. Pure breeding lines are also called inbred, and their genotype is homozygous at most loci. If we cross these two lines, the resulting F1 is tall and red, indicating that the dominant traits are tall and red, and the recessive traits are short and pink. We're looking at two characters, height and color, which are determined by independent genes. We can assign genotypes to all individuals. The tall red parent is big T, big T, big R, big R, that is homozygous for the big T and the big R. The short pink parent is little t, little t, little r, little r, that is homozygous for the recessive alleles. The F1 is big T, little t, big R, little r. Mendel's law of independent assortment states that the alleles of each gene, which is also called the locus, assort independently from the other gene or from the other locus. One way to visualize this is to think of each gene as its own slot machine. The T machine can produce big T or little t independently of what the R machine does. This means that the F1 hybrid can make four types of gametes, big T, big R, big T, little r, little t, big r, and little t, little r. A common mistake is to put two t's or two r's in the same gamete. This obviously violates Mendel's first law and makes no sense when considering the mechanics of meiosis. To determine the F2 genotypic ratios, it is useful to draw a 4x4 four four Punnett square. Let's put the possible eggs on one side and the possible sperms on the other side. Then let's patiently fill in the resulting zygotes, that is, the individual squares, each representing a possible fertilization event. To understand what we got, let's look at the predicted phenotypes. I'm going to use the gray marker to label every zygote that has at least one big T which confers the dominant phenotype tall. Note that if you look at the whole square, about three quarters of the zygotes are tall. Now I use the red marker to label all the zygotes that inherit at least one big R, which is a dominant allele for red. Here too, you can see that I have three quarters red zygotes. Each gene independently will give me a three to one ratio of the dominant to the recessive phenotype. But now let's score the four possible phenotypes that we can see in the F2. I get nine F2s for tall and red, 
three F2s for tall and pink, three F2s for short and red, and one out of 16 F2 for short and pink. The last one is the only individual in the square that is recessive homozygous.